Ladies and gents, you guys know what time it is. Champions Collective. We're back at it with another outstanding episode for you guys, podcast wise, YouTube wise. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend. We're doing big things. We got another jam packed show for you guys right now. I'm excited to have this guest on the show for a few reasons. Number one, he goes to Florida State. Number two, as you see over my left shoulder, mm-hmm. I used to wear number eight. And this individual currently rocks number eight for the offense. Red shirt sophomore running back coming out of Tampa, the Tampa Bay area. Trey Sean Ward is joining us here. Before we get into this conversation, make sure you go follow my guy on Twitter. You can find him at at nine, the actual number nine, not the word nine, the number nine, M-X-V-I underscore. Also on Instagram, follow him at Showtime. Two W's in show, by the way. Two E's in time. The number eight at on Instagram. That's where you follow him at. At Showtime 8 on Instagram. Trayshawn Ward joining us here, Champions Collective Podcast. What's happening? How you doing? Oh, great. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing great, man. I'm doing wonderful. I know you're doing good. You're part of a 2-0 team right now, ball club, man. I know every th- everybody's excited about what's going coming forward for you guys. I was able to attend the LSU game, man, in New Orleans, man. I was excited, man, being able to see you guys put in work, do what you came to do. Uh, but before we get into, you know, the thick of things with the ball club, you 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 grew you grew up in the Tampa area. Uh, when did football become a big part of your life, and who was your favorite collegiate team growing up? Uh, I feel like you know football always been a big thing to me since. Uh, I grew up around football. You know, I had uncles that played in college. You know, I had a couple relatives that played in the professional league. So, you know, it was always instilled in me. And, you know, it started, you know, at the age of six. You know, that's when I started playing football. And ever since then, you know, I've just been kept with it and getting better and better and whatnot. So uh, when it comes to favorite college team, I didn't really have a favorite college team because like, I ain't, I wasn't really into college. But, you know, I did watch, like, you know, the big three Florida schools, you know, when they was at yep. the peak in time and whatnot, but uh, yeah, I didn't really have no college team. I could tell you NFL team, though. Yo, who's right. your favorite NFL team? Oh, Green Bay Packers by far. The Packers. You, do you still like the Packers right now? Yes, yes. Oh, I'm yes. sorry about that heartbreaking loss to the Vikings <laughs> this past Sunday. <laughs> it might it might be a long one. It might be a long season, so buckle up. Prepare yourself. Got to respond. You got to respond. Yeah, you got to you got to <laughs> respond. Definitely. And you talked about having a few family members make it to the pros. Uh, who were who were the uh, who who are those family members that made it to the pros? Oh well, this was like based, this was like um my relatives like you know by marriage you know. Gotcha. I can't tell you their name right now because it's not you know on top of my head right now. But you know, just by hearing stories of them having the NFL talks and like what the draft was going through and the process mm-hmm. and whatnot. Just it was amazing and whatnot to see that I had, you know, people in my side of the family that, you know, made it all the way that far. No doubt. No doubt. And talking about the process, uh, describe your decision making process uh, that led you to Florida State. Um, So, like, you know, most people know, you know, uh, I decommitted from Maryland when it came down to, like, you know, December time. And uh, mm-hmm. during that time, you know. Throughout the offseason, you know, I was hitting coaches up and whatnot. And during that time, you know, they already had those guys that they wanted to have uh, that was going to come to the, uh, the early signing day and whatnot. And what, you know, what drew me to Florida State, you know, because it's Florida State. It's a big school, you know, put, lead, put people in the league, you know, basically RBU. They got a lot of bats they put in the league, like Dalvin Cooks and Warren Duns and all that. And, you know, it was close to home. So my people can see me come play someday. And, you know, they got a good good school and good uh, football program. You can't get no better than that. So uh, that's why I showed it. You know, I felt like I had an opportunity to go showcase my talents and whatnot. And, you know, I felt like I had an opportunity to go show the world that I can do this and whatnot as far as a walk-on. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's closer to home, uh, great in school and a football program. And it's just Florida State. you got to love it. Talk about your experience. I don't know if people actually heard what you said, but you walked on, you know, mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about that process and the adversities you had to face compared to some adversities or the lack thereof when it comes to scholarship players. And now you're on scholarship. So tell us a little bit about that, a little bit about that process. Uh, not a lot. The process was, was hard. You know, I was, uh, you got to have a 
a very mental, we got to have a very strong mental to be a walk on and accept the stuff that we do every day as far as like giving looks to the, the uh, ones and, you know, not making, not sure if you're going to play or not. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, that was a time that I had built my mental capacity because at first, you know, coming out of high school, I wasn't as highly recruited, but I was recruited, and, you know, around my time, you know, I was respected as far as like football or whatnot. And then coming to, coming to college as a walk-on. At first, I didn't even know what a walk-on was. I just knew it was an opportunity to come play football one night. Mm-hmm. Was, and um, I took the opportunity. And then when it got, when I got here, you know, I just seen how stuff was different. Like, you know, kind of treating them different from like the scholarship players. You know, I understand why, but, you know, it just, it just took a little token on me because sometimes I used to think like, you know, maybe I'm not enough or whatnot. You know, like my uh, talent not getting exposed, you know, they're not watching or whatnot. But, uh, Seeing them, uh, seeing my sophomore year, you know, Jordan came up to our office coordinator telling them, like, you need to see the film or whatnot, you know, go watch the film. He's like, you know, he's doing, you know, he's doing the ones, right? And um, seeing that and then look going back, watching it, and then next week, you know, I'm over there practicing with them boys. And, like, you know, it was just a, a testament to me because, you know, at first I didn't think my hard work was getting, you know, noticed at first. So I was just yeah. thinking, I'm this for nothing. So, it was definitely it was definitely hard for me because at times I didn't think like you know my talent was enough you know I was I was ready to quit you can't even ask for coach I told him like you know I was getting to that point of, like just hanging it up because I didn't think nothing was going my way until that uh that January when we came back from spring you know coach Mor- uh, Norvell put me on scholarship and everything changed then yeah, so you know it's very uh, it's a mental game when it comes to that. How did you find out? Like, was there a certain like sim uh? uh- uh, announcement? How did did they, were they did uh, Coach Novell surprise you about the scholarship offer? How did you find out? It's crazy because uh, we just got back from break and uh, I was I was sleeping and this this eight a.m. My um uh, position coach come calling me, blowing my phone up. So I get my phone, I answer it. He's snapping. He like, "Cool, you want to hear Coach Novell calling you? You better pick up the phone." Da da da. This and that. I'm like, "Okay, I got you. I got you." So. Uh, Pick up the phone, call Coach Ravel. You know, first thing he say, uh, what you doing sleep? You know, and it, we was off this time. He asked me what we doing sleep. So I'm like, you know, yeah. just catch sleep. You know, I we barely get it, you know. But um, then that's when he broke it down to me. He was talking about, because I told him um, uh, I didn't plan on coming back if, like, you know, it was on, like, scholarship being in the talks. And um, he told me he was going to get back with me and, uh see how the spots was going. And then he told me that he had an extra spot for me to put me on scholarship. And he told me just because I scored a Duke game doesn't mean he put me on scholarship. He still want me to like, you know, he values my work ethic and he values like how I come to practice every day. So he just wanted mm-hmm. to keep doing that and then just keep doing that and keep my grades up and keep the scholarship. Yeah. So you go from being a walk-on running back to a full scholarship running back to a starting running back. And also preseason, you were named to the dope Walker award watch list as a, you know, preseason guy, you know, how was that? What, what does it mean to to you to be named, you know, to a preseason list like that considered one of the best running backs in the country? Uh, If you'd have told me that this a few years ago, I wouldn't believe I'd be at this spot right now. You know, it's a, I feel like this is the all the work that I've been putting in, you know, after the time before we lift, at the time after lifts, you know, you know, coming home thinking that, you know, nobody was looking at me. This is just like a, a great opportunity for me because it just shows that my uh, work is being noticed. And with that being said, you know, just because, you know, I'm on that watch list, it doesn't, you know, deter my uh, work ethic when it comes to practice because, you know, you got to come with a purpose every day, earning that 1%. So, you know. It's just an accolade that I can work more towards, but uh, I don't try to get into all that. But, you know, I still got to come work there every day. Yeah. And the first ball game talking about running backs, Florida State, you guys, you were a part of something that never was done before. FSU had three 100 yard rushers in a game for the first time in program history in what we call week zero versus Duquesne. What does it mean to you to be a part of that huge accomplishment? It means a lot because, you know, working with my brother's uh start of spring, you know, you know, all the spring workouts, the fall camps, the summer workouts, you know, grinding, you know, those days where we really want to go out there because we saw it and, you know, we tired and whatnot. And then just 
coming to that point where week zero, we did something that, you know, hasn't been done in a few years. It's just like, like I said, like our works has been noticing whatnot. And proud, I'm proud of those guys because we come to work every day. We push each other, you know, Trey and LT, we push each other to be the best version of ourselves. You know, we all learn from each other too. So like, and then like the day before the day, well, the game, you know, the morning of, you know, we was uh, all talking to each other, like, you know, why not let's just, like, get 100 yards? Everybody get 100 yards, because, you know, I feel like mm. we, we could have did that, and, you know, we did. So uh, I feel like we put, you know, we spoken into existence and whatnot and, like, just came. And I'm just glad that we came out there and made some history. And talk about, tell us, you know, from for the individuals from the outside looking in, you know, I know all three of you guys are competitive. But it seems to be a genuine friendship. You guys all root for each other. Sometimes you might be the lead dog. You know, it might be someone else. But it doesn't seem like there's any animosity between the three of you guys when it comes to the rotation. How did that relationship establish knowing that it's going to be three of us getting time? And depending on who we play, it might be a fourth with the, 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 the true freshman involved. But it seems like you guys are, you know, best friends on the football field, play the same position, and you guys root for each other as well? Uh, I feel like this this dinner all, like, you know, was put in when Jay Sean was here. Because, you know, Jay Sean, when Jay Sean was here, we had the the same, we had the same standard, you know, we got to be happy for everybody. We got to be yep. genuine. But we got to wait on ours and whatnot. So, like, when Jay Sean was here, you know, we had that same little standard whatnot. And, you know, we always push each other to be the best version of ourselves. And then, you know, with him being gone, you know, a leader had to step up in the room. And, you know, with me being the older guy, you know, I had to take I had to take that role. And then with the standard that we had last year, we brought it in this year. And, you know, I was just teaching these guys because, you know, I always taught these guys, like, you know, when everybody do that, when everybody do their job, you know, everybody eats. So, like, you know, I don't care if it's me on the field, LC on the field, Trey Bishop or Rodney on the field, you know. Yeah. See, everybody should see. And, like, during that Duquesne game, you know, uh, <laughs> when Rodney stole, I was probably – I almost got a flat because, you know, I was so excited for, like, you yeah. know, Rodney's touchdown and all. I was on the field, you know. I, I, I feel like I was happier more than him, you know. Coach Rodell, <laughs> you can't do that, Trey Sean. You can't do that. I know you're happy, but you can't do that. But, you know, I feel like when you be genuine, like, toward one another like we do, you know, it just opened up success for the whole group, you know. No question. And it's just like, it's like our relationship is so – I think our relationship is so genuine because, like, you know, I don't think anybody else has that run that like type of connection in um running back rooms in the other countries and whatnot. No, I like it, and it's noticeable as well. Um, you know, when one make a play, you all make a play because you're playing a team sport, and sometimes it might be your game, it might be LT, it might be Trey, it might be Rodney, whoever. But I love seeing you guys root for each other. And speaking of that, is there a nickname? That you have for your running back groom? Like, have y'all got, have y'all talked about a nickname or something like that? You know. Uh, we haven't been talking about it yet, but like, you know, we sticking with the three headed muscle for, you know, for right now until we find something better. But, you know, it's going to, we're going we gonna to come up with a nickname coming soon. Yeah. Up. yeah we, we listen for our, our viewers that are checking us out on YouTube, for our listeners that are listening to us on the podcast, whatever, you know, format you listen to help, help Trey Sean and his teammates in the running back room, come up with a nickname, like, really? you know, yeah, let, let us know. Like, Throw something in our comment box. We'll definitely get it out. You know, three musketeers, you know, three-headed monster, you know, who, the, the goon squad. Let, let's, let's, we got to come up with a nickname because these guys going to put in work throughout the year. We definitely our, do it all. Yeah, we, that, that, that's, that's y'all assignment right now, Florida State fans. Help Trey, Sean, LT, Trey, Rodney. Help these boys with a nickname. Definitely. The top. Definitely. When you look at the rotation and how things going to be happening, they need to they need to have a nickname. Tra- y- y- y'all got to have a nickname, Trey. Definitely do. Though. We definitely do. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully we can have it in place before y'all put on that all white with the white <laughs> helmets Friday night. Yes, Louisville. sir. We're we going to tap into Louisville. But before we do so, aside from the ending of the LSU game, what was your favorite part in that game? Like what? What? What did you outside of you know the block field goal that led to the victory? What was your favorite part in the LSU game? The most favorite, your most favorite part. I feel like my favorite part was when uh, Jordan Travis sitting there in the pocket. He threw the pokey and um for the, the touchdown. One hander, the one hander. Yeah, and that was. I think you know, it just shows like you know, 
I don't think a lot of guys can do that. You know, stand in the pocket, you know, and you see how the hit was. A free, a free defender right in his grill. In his face, you know, stood in there, got right back up, dropped it right in the, right in the, you know, basket for the touchdown. And it's just like, you know, I just, I think that was like the most moment because like, you know, as far as that, you know, that was a turning point for us. That was momentum shift, you know, and then just seeing Jordan just do that. It just like, you know, made me want to do better because like, you know, he took that and still performed how he performed and dropped it in the uh, basketball pokey. And then it was just like, it was just like mind breaking. Like he no really question. did. Yeah. 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 That, that, that pokey had a heck of a day. Pokey monster is what yeah. I call him. He's out there giving them boys hell, scaring everybody. <laughs> you feel me? So he had a, he had a big day. Uh, you played on Sunday night versus LSU. You had a bye week and now you're getting ready to play Louisville on Friday. Does your routine or rhyme change any when you're not playing on Saturday? Uh, well, for us, it didn't change. We still practice how we practice. You know, uh, yeah. we went Tuesday, Wednesday. We had a couple of days off to give our body the rest, but you know, we couldn't find. We couldn't like just you know be what's the word? We couldn't be complacent with you know the two and zero where we at right now. You know, no question, a lot more work. Got to be better. We got to get one percent better each and every day, and you know we still got to implement the game plan that the coaches are putting out to us, and we got to get better as far as like the scouts team giving us great looks for the uh, upcoming game for Louisville. So like you know, this bye week it was it was we got that work in. So I didn't see it as it's like you know some teams might just chill, you know, get complacent, you know, all that. But when it comes to Mike, you know, nah, we we gonna get that work in. What are the keys to beating Louisville? You know, they had a slow start, lost to Syracuse and bounced back last week, uh, last Friday night, if I'm not mistaken, against Central Florida. You know, team that this is their home opener. So, you know, they're going to be fired up. But what are the keys to beat Louisville? Uh, I feel like the keys can be little things and controlling our emotions because, you know, uh, we got to do the little things right because, you know, an inch to the left or the right can be the end of the game or whatnot. So, you Facts. know, you got anybody yep. And um, when it comes to emotional responses, you know, it's going to be a lot of those emotional responses when it comes to the game, you know, with the passion, you know, it's going to be trash talking. There's going to be a lot of that going back and forth. And we just got to eliminate those so it don't hurt us and get the 15 yard penalties and whatnot. So we got to play poised. We got to play with a sense of urgency as well. And, you know, we got to play smart so we don't, you know, stab ourselves in the back. No question. And that's one thing that I like from the team so far, you know, more disciplined, sound play. You know, last few years, as you know, you know, it was a lot of mistakes, pre-snap mistakes, you know, shooting yourself in the foot, you know, just hurting yourself before the game gets into a flow. What I'm seeing from you guys are guys are dialed in. Everyone knows exactly what they're supposed to do. People communicating, you know what I mean? And we're not seeing the mistakes that we saw in years past. And that's the first sign of the trajectory is starting to change and go in the right direction. So keep that mindset and keep emphasizing that throughout the team throughout the locker room you know do know what you're supposed to do do your job and trust your man the man next to you so hats off to you guys and hats off to the coaching staff and being able to instill that into you guys trey sean before we let you go we're going to transition to the two minute part of our show two minute drill is what I, what I like to call it i'm gonna hit you with rapid fire questions i want your honest unbiased answer you guys got to score a touchdown you can't settle for a field goal we need seven to win we down by five we got to score a touchdown Right, we're gonna put the ball in your hand. Let's see what we what, we, what you gonna do. First question: More dislike for Miami or Florida, and why? Who do you dislike the most? Uh, mm, I feel like it's Miami. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, but it's like, it's like, I feel like it's way deeper. It's way deeper than like you know, the rivalry. It's like. I feel like when we go on the field, when we play on the, when we play against them, be like real beef, like <laughs> it's personal. Florida, like, like yeah, Florida, yeah, we be having the same intensity because this is a rival. But like when it's Miami, it's like a whole different type of atmosphere and a different type of feeling. It's like a, like we really out here trying to bang out. So yeah, I feel like it's really like I feel Miami. Okay, okay. Favorite FSU uniform set? Which is your favorite FSU uniform? Uh. Mm. Either all garnet or the yeah. black black uniforms. That all garnet hard. I remember yeah. when I first got there, I used to call it the blood clots. <laughs> That's what they used to call it all garnet, the blood clots. 
Hey, ain't gonna lie, that all gonna go crazy though. That all gone it, man. No question. That all gone it, bro. Like it hit different, especially at a night game. What you say? Yeah, <laughs> I'm right there with you. Favorite school tradition is what? Hmm. I feel like the legacy wall. I like the legacy wall. You know. That's dope. No question. And I love being able to, I love Mike Novell being able to add some of the older players who are mm-hmm. there to be a part of that as well. You know what I mean? The young and the old come together and we all talk. I, I, I like that as well. That's dope. That's dope. All right. Favorite food spot in Tallahassee. When you need it, when you, your, your best meal, when you hungry, your go-to spot, who you leaning on when it comes to food in Tallahassee? I got two of them. Uh, OMG Seafood or I'm going with Chicago Shake and Grill. Okay, that those are your two. How, how often do you go to those spots? Actually, I think I ate from Chicago like either a day or two days ago, and then OG Seafood. I just ordered that like Friday, like last week, so it was pretty recent. Okay, teammate, you're giving the ox chord to when you need to listen to some vibes. Who are you giving L- the ox chord to? Give it LT. Okay, L- all right, all right, funniest teammate. It got to be out of Robert Cooper and Rodney Hill. Got to be out of them soon. Coop funny? Big Coop? He's just, I'm telling you, he's a funny dude. He's a funny dude. I used to live with him, too, so I used to see all, like, you know, you know his characteristics and whatnot, so yeah. he's that. All right. Who is the GOAT at your position? And I'm talking about NFL, right? If you had to pick one player to be the GOAT, at your position could be current player or someone who's no longer playing, but who would you go with? Oh, no question. Barry Sanders. Barry. No question. No question. I see a little Barry in you too. Yes, sir. You know I see that a little is. Barry in you. <laughs> All right. Last question for you. When you're not playing football or in class, what are you doing? Either hanging with my friends or we are, we on a game getting it in, playing some game. What you play? You, you play mad? Yeah, I play Madden. I like 2K. I like uh, Call of Duty 2, Warzone. So which one you really nice in? Which which one out of those three you talk? If you had to say I'm I'm like really like that in this one, which one is it? Warzone and Madden. Warzone and Madden. You online? Of course. Of What's course. your online name? Uh, I could drop it to you if you know. It's, yeah. uh, so we gonna drop this out. Let's, so you know, it might be some fans want to lock and load with you. See what you really like. I might right. want to lock and load with you. I bet, bet, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely get that to you then. Yeah, drop to that to me. Drop that to me. But hey, Trey Sean, man, thank you for joining us. Champions Collective Podcast. You guys know how we do. Bringing you some of the best student athletes in the country. Highlighting what they do on and off the football field and their team. Make sure you guys follow my guy on Twitter at the number nine, not the road nine, M-X-V-I underscore. Also on IG, follow him at Showtime. It's two W's in show. Two E's in time. The number eight, Dope Walker. Watch list. Treshawn Ward. Big game in the all icy whites this Friday. Make sure y'all tune in. Number eight going to be doing major work on the offensive side for Florida State. Treshawn, most importantly, be safe and go nose. Third, thank you.